Okay, so again, we're asked to go from uh, f prime back to f. So this is the graph of f prime right here. And um, we're going to start off by finding x-intercepts. X-intercepts on f prime mean something special on f. They mean either relative extrema or drag. So I know something special is going to happen at x equals 1 and x equals 3. Another thing you want to look for is relative extrema on f prime. Relative extrema on f prime mean that there's going to be an inflection point on f. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to make a sign chart for f prime using the curve itself and looking at the x-axis. So if I'm above the x-axis, if I am above the x-axis, f prime is positive. If I'm below the x-axis, f prime is what? f prime is negative. So recall the sign charts you made for f prime and f double prime in the previous lesson. And essentially you're doing the same thing, but you're just doing it visual. So what does that mean? That means that your function is going to start off f to increase, and then it will, all the negative signs, decrease, and finally, it will finish off by increasing. So at least you know the pattern of f. You know it's going to start here, because that's the point they gave you. And you know it's going to go up, and then it's going to go down, and then it's going to go back up. Now, in the very beginning, because you went from positive to negative, you could have also right away stated that you're going to have a relative max here, and a relative min here. And when I say here, I don't literally mean here at this pink dot, this pink point, I mean at x equals 3 and at x equals 1. So you start to get more information about your function f, okay? Um, you know it has a relative max, an ip, and a relative min. And you also know its pattern of increase and decrease. Okay, what we say for the end is we save concavity for the end. So we are now going to make an f double prime sign chart. Okay? So, take a look at your x equals 2 where you say there's going to be an inflection point. See how f prime is decreasing from 0 up to 2? That means that the slopes of f prime are negative. Until we get here, then it's 0. And then all these slopes, because f prime is increasing, are all are all what? Are all positive. And now you have information about increase, decrease, and concavity. For example, from 0 to 2, you now know that you're concave what? And from 2 to 4, you know that you are concave up. So the more x-intercepts you have, and the more relative extrema you have for f prime, the more complex it's going to be to go from f prime back to f. Alright, so what I've done is I've broken up my function f into 1, 2, 3, 4 intervals based on any relative extrema and any inflection points. It makes it a little easier to connect and sketch. Like for example, you know you're going to start off increasing and concave down. Something like this. Again, you don't know the magnitude of your increase. You just know that you're increasing in concave down. You just know the shape. And then you're going to decrease and be concave down. You're going to continue to decrease, but this time you're going to be concave up. So here's one interval. Here's another one. Here's another one, and then the final interval you're going to be increasing and concave up. Increasing and concave up. Okay, all the special points that you had initially labeled should show up. Like, is there a relative max at x equals 1? Yes. Is there a relative min at x equals 3? Yes. Is there an inflection point at x equals 2? Yes, here's your inflection point right here. Okay, what we haven't talked about is the amount of increase and decrease as you're moving from left to right. And 
We can approximate the increase and decrease by looking at the area between f prime and the x-axis. And all the area above the x-axis we can consider to be positive area, so I've indicated it here in blue. And all the area under the x-axis we can consider it to be negative. And it kind of gives us an idea of how much to go up and how much to go down, approximately. So if you compare the blue area to the red area, you can tell that there's more blue, right, than red. So what does that mean? That means that wherever I start from, I'm going to have more increase overall than decrease. So that means that I should end off what compared to where I start. If there's more increase than decrease, I should end up higher than my starting point. And for now, for this chapter, since you don't, you, don't, you don't know how to integrate yet, you only know how to derive, um, this is plenty good enough. If you can get the sh general shape correctly, and if you can figure out whether you end off higher at the same level or lower, those are the three things that could occur, that's good enough in terms of figuring out the magnitude of your increase and decrease for now.